Lesson 10, here we go. Um, let's say there's a 25 inch ribbon. Okay, can you picture the 25 inch ribbon? That's more than 25 inches, but you get the idea. So here's what I wanna do. I want to cut it into four equal parts. How much is gonna be in each part? So let's straighten it out. Okay. okay, so if I cut 25 inches into four equal parts, then that means what is one of those parts going to look like? And how do you figure that out? Do you know what the answer is? What is it? Six and one fourth. Six and one fourth. Okay, good. Now, here, here that's one way to, I, mean, I think you just divide it and then put the remainders of fraction and stuff, and basically change an improper fraction to mixed number. Now think about this. You could just divide, um, divide it into four parts and you got, like, you got like six and then a little left over. Well, how much do you have left over? You have one inch left over, right? Because six times four is 24. So if you have a six inch ribbon, so you have four that are six, piece, six inches long, and then you have one inch, that you have a fifth one that's one inch. Well, what do you do with that one inch? You divide that into four equal parts. So basically what you're doing is you're dividing that one inch into four. What's one fourth of one inch? One fourth. One fourth inch, right? So each part is gonna be six inches plus another one fourth inch, okay? So here's what's happening. You're dividing 25 divided by six. Well, it goes in, or divided by four, it goes in six full times, and then you have one inch left over. And then what do you do with that? You divide that. How do you divide one by four? You just do this, one divided by four, okay? So basically we just divide it normally, and instead of saying remainder one, instead of saying remainder one, we just wrote that, we divided that remainder into four parts too. So how do you divide something into four parts? You just throw it over four. So what's elephant divided by four? Um, elephant, over one. elephant over four. Okay, well that, that was the other answer. Okay, so how do you divide one by four? Just one over four, that's it, okay? So instead of writing your remainder like remainder one, just write your remainder over four or whatever you're dividing by and you're done. So six and one fourth inches. Okay, this is basically taking um, an improper fraction, which is this, 25 fourths, because that's just a division problem, right? 25 divided by four. And this is how you change an improper fraction into a mixed number. Okay, so this is more Subway friendly, right? Six and a fourth turkey sandwiches, I think they could handle that. But if I say 25 fourths, they'll still, they'll still be like, okay, so how many pieces of bread do I have to grab from the... What's that thing called? Oven? Uh, oven the, yeah. The, so the, the bread thing. It's still, bread this is still bread. easier to figure out, thing. okay? So um, all you're doing is dividing normally and you take your m remainder and throw it over your, uh, what's this number called in a division problem? Your denominator. No, it is called the denominator in the fraction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or your divisor, right? That's what you're dividing by, your divider, okay? All right, so let's try something else. So remainder one, re having a remainder doesn't really work in real life. We don't really use that a lot. So we're not gonna say remainder anymore. We're gonna write our remainders as a fraction for now, okay? So for example, uh, this we did this already, but what's one third or divide 100% by three? What is that? We already figured that out. Do you remember what we said, Grady? 33 and one third. Yeah, so 100 divided by three. Three goes into 10 three times. With one left over, we still have digits, so we're bringing down another zero. How many times does three go into 10? Another three times. And then you get a remainder here. So instead of saying 33 remainder one, we're gonna take that remainder and divide it by three. 
a one third. So this guy goes on top, this guy goes on the bottom, and there's your answer, 33 and one third. Now, here's a common mistake. Um, it's not like, yeah, like remainder, this is a remainder one, but it's not always gonna be whatever the remainder is over this, you can reduce it at sometimes too. Let's try a couple more examples and uh, we'll figure it out here. Okay, let's do this. Um, let's define this. We've mentioned this already today, but what's an improper fraction? It sounds like a bad, uh, a bad fraction. Like an improper fraction has like really bad manners. No, that's not what it means. What's an improper fraction, Kiara? Yes. <laughs> May I use the bathroom? Yes. All right, Grace, what's an improper fraction? What's a good way to define it? A fraction that is not very proper. Um, <laughs> it's a fraction that is like not turned into a mixed number. Okay. So three-fourths well, is not turned into a mixed number. Is that an <laughs> improper fraction? No. What makes an improper fraction improper? Who are you to judge? Um, the top number is bigger than yes. the top number. Yes. Okay. And not just that, it could be the same. So, um, improper fraction is greater than or equal to one. Okay. So, for example, five fourths is greater than one. Five fourths of a pizza is one whole pizza plus a little bit more. Right? Do you see that? What are you guys doing? Uh, we. Uh, I can't read your writing. That says that your dad, this says your mom. Oh. I'm confused. I'm confused I'm too. Concerned. Okay, this is an improper fraction because that big, that top number is bigger than the smaller number, which means there's more than one whole piece of one whole pizza or one whole pie. This is an improper fraction. Four fourths. There's a better way to say that. How do you say four fourths? Uh, yeah. One. one. One whole, that's just one, one. That's just one whole, okay? Four fourths is just one whole pizza. So it's improper, technically, to say four fourths. The better way to say it is one. But in math, we don't have a lot of use for mixed numbers. We like improper fractions. So we will change things to improper fractions because they're easier to work with sometimes, okay? So, um, so for example, let's, uh, let's simplify this answer. So not reduce it, but to simplify it. Four fifths plus four fifths. What's four fifths plus four fifths? What's four fifths plus four fifths? Eight fifths, that's right. Now, you can, in good conscience, leave that, and that's fine. But if the directions say, simplify to a mixed number, then how do you figure that out? Well, this is just a division problem. How do you figure this out? What do you do? How do you write this as a mixed number? So these guys know because they've been answering. Marin, what do you think? You divide eight by five. So eight by five, which means five goes into eight one time with three left over, and then what do you do with that three? Yep, and then you divide that by five. So you throw that over five, so one and three fifths. So you can just say equals one and three fifths. It's the same thing, because if you think about the pizza, here's a pizza with fifths in it. Okay, here's um, one, this is five fifths, plus three more fifths, See how that's eight total fifths? So eight fifths is one whole pizza plus another three fifths. So it's kind of like saying um, when Grady was born, he was 15 inches long. Okay, 15 inches long. Is that the correct way to say that? It's okay, you can say that, but what's a better way to say 15 inches long? Yes, Kara. One foot and three inches, okay? You know the, the moms who say, um, oh, how old is he? Oh, he's 48 months. 
I'm like, no, he's not. He's four. He's four <laughs> years old. Quit That's saying like four eight months. You walk up to you and you just like try to start a conversation. You're like, how old are you? And they're like. I'm seven and three quarters. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> How do you gauge that? Like, yeah. So um, it's really just this, guys. If you can find a whole year in there, then put that in there. You're not 15 months. You're a year and three months. You're a little over a year. Okay? Um, not that you're talking it. Well, you could be talking it. 15 months. Were you guys talking at 15 months? I don't know. I don't know. Were you saying? Yeah. Okay, so if you can find a whole number in there, take it out, put it where it belongs, all right? Let's try a, a couple other things, see if you guys can figure out this math. You ready? Do this, you can either do it in your head or do it on paper. Here we go, one and three fifths plus one and three fifths. What do you get? What's your answer? Grace knows. Anyone else? got that quick are you afraid you got you're gonna be wrong because you're confident i want to say it but i'm most likely will say it wrong so yeah probably okay well you want to go for it be brave two and six five okay six fifths there's that's not wrong but do you see why it could be said better it's the right answer but there's a more grammatically correct way to say that okay so Kiara and Avery are waving at me because they're so excited to answer. <laughs> so, eeny, meeny, okay, Avery, what's um, up? Three okay, how'd you get that? Dang it. Because I know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is what I would have written first, and then I would have said, hey, there's another hole in there. Do you see that? There's another whole number in there. Six fifths is just one whole and then another fifth left over. Well, you could just do that math really quick. Six fifths, six divided by five is one, with one left over. So this is technically two and one and one fifth. What's two and one and one fifth? Well, that's three and one fifth. Two and one is three. So two and one and one fifth is three and one fifth, okay? All right, so technically what we did is we kind of carried. See how we carried the whole number into the whole number count? Just like we carry the, if you go over 10 in the ones column, you have to carry the one. You're, you're basically adding another 10 in the tens column, okay? If you get, if you add and you end up with more than one, um, one whole, then you have to carry that one whole over to the, the whole number column, yes? Um, you said and like three times. And yeah, but that, that's and where you should say and. and. You should say and after you come to the end of your whole number. So this is three and one fifth. That's now, if I said 100 and three and one fifth, that's not how you say it. 103 and one fifth. That's, yeah, that's not how you should say it. Okay, so say and at the end of a whole number. All right, how's that feel? Let's see, do we have any more goodies, goodies? Yeah, we have a little bit more in uh, just a little bit more. Okay, almost done, you ready? So this is going, changing in, an improper fraction to a mixed number. Now, how do we go the other way? How do we change uh, three and three fourths to a uh, improper fraction? Well, I could draw it out and I know you guys know, know the little circle thing, right? We're going to do the little circle thing. But three and three fourths, if I'm talking in the language of fourths, three holes, like these little mini pizzas, I could eat three of those. Three and three fourths, so that means all of this. So there's four fourths, right? There's four more fourths. There's four more fourths. So let's see, how do you figure out how many total fourths that is? Well, there's three holes. So three times four is 12 fourths, plus you have these three more fourths, right? One, two, three. So you need the three times the four holes, or four times the three holes, and then three more. So you're multiplying four times three, then adding that three more. Okay, what'd you get, Avery, for this? Three and three fourths is what? 
15 over 4. So basically, three holes is four fourths a piece, right? So four of those, four times three is 12, plus the three more that you have left over. So 12 plus three is 15 total fourths, okay? Um, if you guys remember that little thing, if you're rusty, if you don't know how you get that, it's easier to forget. But um, you're just multiplying the denominator times the whole number, you add the numerator, and you keep it over that same denominator. So there's a little formula. So you go denominator, denom, times whole, plus numerator, all over the same denominator, denom. Okay? So you do a little math. You multiply the bottom number and the big number, the whole number, and then you add the numerator, and that's all the math you do, and you put that number on top, and then you keep that same denominator. Okay? Most of you know how to do this, but it kind of makes sense when you, when you translate it to pizza language. Okay? Did you guys have pizza for lunch? <laughs> you had two cookies for lunch? They were my cookies too. And what did you have for lunch? A fruit by the foot. Fruit by the foot? Fruit by the foot? You mean fruit by the 12 inches? Yeah. Okay. Alright. Good job. Black man.